<laughs> Greetings fellow YouTube chemist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make copper hydroxide. For this, you'll need a reaction vessel. In this case, I'm using a 100 milliliter borosilicate glass beaker. Next, you'll need some water. I'm using 50 milliliters of water. Then you'll need magnesium sulfate. My source of magnesium sulfate is washing machine powder, which contains magnesium sulfate. Okay, now we'll be setting aside the water and the magnesium sulfate for making the electrolysis electrolyte solution. Next, you'll need a battery and connecting wires, a copper coin, mine's made from 1976. You can also use coins which are made from uh, 1982 or, bef or earlier. Mine is a US penny. You can also use co copper wire if you don't have US pennies. Next, you need a carbon electrode. In this case, I'm using a pencil with both the end shape. Okay, so these are all, the, this is the power supply and the electrodes. We'll set those aside and we'll make the electrolyte solution now. Keeping the beaker in front, we add the magnesium sulfate to the beaker, then add the water, which I'll be adding in a moment. Okay, there's the water added. Next, we stir the mixture with a stirring rod or glass rod, whatever you can call it. You can also use a magnetic stirrer for the purpose. Okay, now we've stirred it, setting the glass rod aside. Okay, now if you look at the beaker, you can see a large amount of the powder is not dissolved. It's because of impurities in the powder that I have been using. So in case you want to do it, be sure to filter out any excess that doesn't dissolve and then start your, the electrolysis. Otherwise, the whatever impurities is there in your beaker before electrolysis will contaminate your final product. Okay, now let's start our electrodes, making our electrodes ready. We take the battery and we take the coin and we get a wire. We connect the wire to the coin and connect it to the positive terminal of the battery. Okay, that's the coin connected. Oops, I think I dropped the coin. Okay, I got it. Reconnecting the, we are now reconnecting the coin. Just making sure it's everything's tight. And there it is, it's connected. Next, we get the carbon electrode, in this case our pencil. Then we have will uh, connect it to the negative terminal of the battery. So it's going to take some time for me to uh, attach the wire to the pencil, as my gloves are getting rather sticky and the wire is not not able to uh, connect the wire easily. Thanks for your patience. So trying to connect it here. Okay, we got it connected to the pencil, and now we're connecting it to the negative terminal of the battery. After this, you just had to add the copper coin. Okay, so you may notice some changes in our reaction vessel. We changed the battery since the battery was dead, which we later found out. Then we changed the electrodes to copper wire as uh, they are more reliable and contain almost 99.9% .9 copper sorry 99% copper okay the positive terminal is connected and connecting the negative terminal of the battery we can see that one of the wires is bubbling with hydrogen gas also since hydrogen gas is being evolved this place should be this reaction should be done in a well ventilated area and by the way here's a close up Okay, right now I'm pointing to the other electrode. You may not be able to see it. I'm going to move the uh, beaker towards you. Turn it around so that you can see it. Yeah, um, the electrodes are starting to touch, so it's moving it around. Make sure that the alligator clips don't touch the solution either. She will contaminate with iron hydroxides. Okay. 
On the far right of the beaker, you can see a small electrode with blue depo a blue deposit on it. That, that blue deposit is copper hydroxide. That is copper 2 hydroxide, which I'm pointing to at the moment. And here's a much more closer view. Okay, so if you leave it for the solution for an hour or two, or this reaction to go for an hour or two, you may, you will get a lot of copper hydroxide deposited, and then it can be filtered and stored in a vial. In a vial. And here's a, my sample. Here's just a small sample. Okay. Here's another close-up of the sample. A small amount of powder inside. Of course, you can scale up this reaction and make more copper hydroxide in store. Okay. More and more copper hydroxide is being deposited at the moment. Yeah. So, what's happening right now? First, the negative ele uh, electrode, add the negative electrode, the water is splitting into hydrogen, hydrogen and hydroxide. The hydrogen bubbles off as hydrogen gas, hydrogen ions bubble off as hydrogen gas. And the positive electrode, the copper reacts with the hydroxide ions to form copper 2 hydroxide, which is deposited on the surface of the copper wire, which is the electrode. Okay then, you should, once in a while you should shake the electrode so that uh, all the copper deposit falls off and so that the copper wire doesn't uh, break away into the solution and contaminate it. Okay, so that's how you make copper hydroxide. So please subscribe, rate, and comment.